You're watching the Global Baseball Network. Thank you for clicking on this video. And coming up next, a special report on everything that you need to know about baseball in Japan. A very good afternoon to you, baseball fans. This is Marshall Lemur. Welcome once again to the Global Baseball Network and the first of our series of league guides that we're going to do on the channel for you to get you ready for the 2022 season. If you're new to GBN, we cover all of the world's foremost baseball action from the top leagues outside of Major League Baseball. Those leagues are Nippon Professional Baseball in Japan, the Korean Baseball Organization, in South Korea, the CBPL, or the Chinese Professional Baseball League in Taiwan, and the LMB in Mexico. And this series of videos is intended to cover every single thing that you need to know to get you started watching baseball in all of these fine leagues in the 2022 season because, let's be honest, it's looking like Major League Baseball will be in a bit of jeopardy this year. And we're obviously not rooting against it, but we are just here to provide you good content to watch regardless of what happens with the MLB lockout. These episodes will go into detail about the history, league structure, and teams of those four leagues that we cover here on this channel. And as you might have guessed by the title, first up on the docket is Nippon Professional Baseball in Japan, which, interestingly enough, is the second most popular baseball league in the world behind MLB, of course. And just before we get started, make sure that you do not miss the remainder of this series still to come on GBN before the season starts in late March. And of course, there's only one way to stay up to date with production on YouTube. Of course, hit that red subscribe button below the video screen and that bell icon down there right next to it to make sure that you are notified of every single upload on this channel. It's going to be a good season this year, and if it's up to us, we don't want you to miss a thing. Okay, I think that's all the housekeeping stuff out of the way. We'll get started with a little history, so settle in for everything that you need to know about baseball in Japan. Pro baseball was brought over to Japan by a visiting English professor, Horace Wilson, in the 1870s, and it immediately became an enjoyable pastime for many university students. Things started to pick up at the turn of the 20th century, however, and a number of leagues began to appear around the country with increasing levels of competition, including the battle between the big six Tokyo universities that was resolved through baseball. Hosei, Meiji, Keio, Rikyo, Waseda, and Tokyo University, a league that plays in the present day as the Tokyo Big Six. High school baseball also became quite popular in the early days of the 20th century, and in 1915, the best teams met in Nishinomiya in the Osaka metro area to battle it out in a thrilling championship tournament that drew the biggest crowds baseball had ever seen to date in Japan. This tournament also continues to be held to this day, named for the grand monumental venue in which it is held, Koshien Stadium. Nowadays, the Koshien Tournament draws better crowds than March Madness in the United States, and just like March Madness, its standout performers often go on to become the stars of the sport. Starting in the 1920s, American squads would make the journey across the Pacific to square off against the amateur and college teams in exhibition matches much to the delight of Japanese crowds. Sometimes, these teams included major leaguers, like the great Ty Cobb. These contests, MLB's best against collegiate athletes, ended predictably for many years. But in 1934, Matsutaro Shoriki, owner and operator of Yomiuri Shinbun, one of the biggest newspapers in the country, decided that he wanted to professionalize baseball to give the Americans a run for their money. To do this, he assembled a squad of Japan's best young players, naming him the Tokyo Dai Nippon Baseball Club and then invited over a major league all-star team for the ages that included the likes of Jimmy Fox, Charlie Gerringer, Lou Gehrig, and the Bambino himself, managed by the great Connie Mack. These two squads would meet at Jingu Stadium in Tokyo for a thrilling exhibition series in front of sold-out crowds. Game 1 went well for the Japanese off the strength of a remarkable outing by young 18-year-old Eiji Sawamura, who began the game fanning Gerringer, Fox, Gehrig, and Ruth in order, pitching eight full, giving up only one run. Russian phenom Victor Starfin went seven strong in game three, but ultimately, the Americans still won all 18 games that were played throughout the tour. However, Shariki was pleased. 
The crowds came, and his players were amateurs no more. He kept his team together and decided to tour the United States, pitting them against minor league and college squads under a new name, one that stuck for their entire 80-year history, a name that you might already know, the Tokyo Giants. The Giants are like all 12 teams in Japan owned by a major corporation, and they bear the name of that corporation, the Yamayuri Media Group, making them the Yamayuri Giants. This is the case for every team in NPB. The other three 1936 founding members of the JBL, the league that would become NPB in 1950, were the Chunichi Dragons, Hanshin Tigers, and Shochiku Robins. The Dragons play out of Nagoya, owned as they have been since their inception by Nagoya's preeminent newspaper, Chunichi Shinbu. And the Tigers, out of Osaka, are patronized by the Hanshin Electric Railway Company. The Robins were no more only a few years after NPB was formed in the 1950s, and would later move to Yokohama as the team that became the current Yokohama DNA based Stars, who are now owned by prominent game developer DNA, and occupy Yokohama Stadium at the heart of Japan's second largest city. Rounding out the six teams of Central League are the Hiroshima Carp, owned by Mazda playing out of Mazda Zoom Zoom Stadium, and the reigning Japan Series champions, the Yakult Swallows, who occupy Meiji Jingu Stadium in Tokyo, under the patronage of probiotic company Yakult. The other six teams make up Pacific League, and are spread out a bit more than those in Central League, which is mostly limited to the Tokyo and Osaka metro areas. They are the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks out of the Pepe Dome, the Saitama Seibu Lions out of the MetLife Dome, the Oryx Buffaloes out of the Kyocera Dome in Osaka, the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters out of the Sapporo Dome in the city of the same name, the Chiba Lote Marines from Zozo Marine Stadium in Chiba on the eastern border of the Tokyo metro area, and NPB's newest team, the Rakuten Golden Eagles, out of Miyagi Stadium in Sendai. Historically, Central League has never been dominant over their Pacific League counterparts, but for one singular stretch of time in the 1960s through the 1980s. And that has remained true to this day, even in terms of attendance and reach, with a majority of Pacific League teams posting several stars to Major League Baseball, thereby growing their worldwide audiences. And speaking of stars, to give you out there watching a chance to choose what team to root for this season in 2022, I've compiled GBN's all-time best 12 for NPB history. Every year, both leagues release their best nine, a lineup of nine players who excelled at each individual position. It is a prestigious award and acts as a sort of end-of-season all-star team. For our purposes, this best 12 will include one player from each of NPB's 12 teams, that I feel really exemplifies that team's history, mindset, skill set, and future hopes that will hopefully paint a picture of a team whose fan base, or Owen Don, you'd like to join. We'll start with the reigning champion Yakult Swallows, who have been a hard luck franchise since their inception. They didn't see any real consistent success until the 1990s, during a stretch of four pennants and four Japan Series championships. A lot of choices for their greatest ever player from the power of the great Vlad Ballantine owner of the single-season home run record of 60 back in 2013, to the leadership and resilience of longtime field general Atsuya Furuta. But ultimately, we went with the greatest Japanese pitcher ever, the man who single-handedly carried the prestige of the franchise on his back during the early periods of futility in the 50s and 60s, Masaichi Kaneda. In a 19-year career, 15 of which was spent with the Swallows, he struck out 4,500 batters while holding a 2.39 ERA and winning an incredible 400 games, joining only Cy Young and Walter Johnson as the third of three people ever to win 400 games in professional baseball. He has three Sawamura awards and the 1958 pitching triple crown in his trophy case, but no Japan Series rings with the team that made him a legend. Kanida's spirit encourages the Swallows to pride themselves on their never-say-die attitude, despite the fact that they're not always able to to parlay remarkable individual performances into team-wide success. Still, they have the rich history, batting for dominance in baseball's biggest market, Tokyo, and have proven, thanks to their first championship in 20 years this past season, that they can compete with the best, despite their less-than-intimidating name. Catching in our best 12 lineup is the direct opposite of the Yakult Swallows, a perennial winner, a team and player whose names have become synonymous with complete dominance. The best hitting catcher in baseball history, Katsuya Nomura, and the team that he spent all but two years of his 18-year career with, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. 
Nomura debuted for the Hawks in 1954 and wasted no time leading them to a Japan Series triumph in 1955 and again in 1959, along with four Pacific League pennants in 61, 64, 65, and 66. He sometimes struggled to hit for average but could, without fail, bring the power every season of his career, retiring in 1980 with a whopping 657 career home runs, the most by any catcher in baseball history, including Cincinnati Reds great Johnny Bench. He decided it would be fun to win three more rings as a manager in his 24-year managerial career and included the last 10 years of his playing career, enshrining himself in the Baseball Hall of Fame as one of the greatest to ever do it. Like Nomura himself, as well as the teams that he managed, the modern Hawks have no weaknesses anywhere on the field. They are a very flashy team made up of strikeout pitchers and home run hitters, and one that is deeply protective of their winning traditions. They do not let many of their stars post themselves to major league teams and, as a result, have drawn criticism from other teams who relent to their players' demands for upsetting the balance of the league. This practice has shown results in recent years, with the Hawks winning seven of the ten Japan series in the decade of the 2010s. They miss the playoffs this year for the first time since 2013, but make no mistake, they'll be back. In summary, like Nomura, they are the most reliably talented squad in all of NPB. So if that's your bag, here's your team. At first, we go to the team that was very close to being named the Tokyo Yankees when they were first incorporated. Like the Yankees, they have a long history of winning, and winning so much that they make dynasties. And, like the Yankees, they also count the greatest of all home run hitters among the ranks of their Hall of Famers. For Pete's sake, they're so synonymous with history that the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame is located right below the Tokyo Dome where they play their home games. This man's name is a name you probably know if you're already subscribed to this channel. That's right, it's Sadaharu O and the Yamayuri Giants. There have been so many great Giants players I could fill this entire 12. Like Sawamura, who we mentioned earlier, who was so good that they named the Best Pitcher of the Year award after him. But we have to get great players from every team in here, so O will be the only Giant to make this roster. The Taiwanese-born slugger slammed an unmatched total of 868 career home runs across his 19-year career with the Giants, spurring on the 60s dynasty that won 9 of 10 Japan series during that decade. They rose back to prominence again in the 1980s with a solid stretch, but a great deal of bad press and middling futility, along with the rise of the Hawks at the turn of the 21st century, has caused them to go to the way of the Yankees too, coasting on history and hoping to regain their former glory. But even the present-day Giants can't quite match the huge expectations placed on their shoulders by past generations. They are still very fun to watch, epitomizing the Japanese game beautifully. High-speed, gutsy squeeze bunting, and staggeringly good pitching. Our next player is one of the most legendary underdogs in NPB history, just like the one team for which he played during his 22-year career. Fumio Fujimura after his stellar career as a right-handed pitcher was interrupted due to military service in 1943, was counted out by many of his younger teammates, but exploded for an MVP season in 1949 off the back of a single-season record 191 base hits. He would finish his career in 1958 at the age of 42 with 1,694 hits, 224 home runs, and 1,126 runs batted in. But even that was not enough to get the Hanshin Tigers to a Japan Series championship. Even though they are the lucky team to call Koshien Stadium home, the Tigers have only treated their fans to five Central League pennants and one singular Japan Series victory. Like the Chicago Cubs, they were cursed by one man's foolish actions that caused a sad championship drought. And many believe, in this the year of the Tiger, that maybe the curse will be broken. The modern Tigers carry Fujimura's example of some solid but not excellent pitching and stellar contact hitting and speed, but they are, unquestionably, the ultimate underdogs. At third, we were spoiled for choice. We could have picked Shigeo Nagashima of the Giants, Hiromitsu Ochiai of the Marines, Koji Akiyama of the Lions, but instead, the start at the hot corner goes to the Iron Man of Japan, Sachio Kinugasa of the Hiroshima Carp. Kinugasa, like his carp, could never be counted out. For about 2,215 games in a row to be exact. He and the car played through injury, lethargy, and disappointment just as easily as victory, excellence, and happiness. 
it's quite appropriate considering the loyalty of a fan base and the legacy of a team that arose out of the ashes of the atomic bomb. Baseball historians are quick to point out that the carp is an excellent symbol of Hiroshima's rebuild in the 1950s, and they, as perhaps the most loyal fans in Japan, through thick and thin, stick by their team. Those fans watching Kinugasa, as well as with the modern day carp, are incredible defenders, strong power hitters, and quite fleet footed, day in, day out. We have our second Pacific League team breaking into the lineup at shortstop. And there are few middle infielders in baseball history who represent the offense, offense, offense mentality of the Chibolote Marines more than Hiroyuki Yamazaki. The Marines have never had above average pitching until fairly recently, and they almost always lose them immediately to Major League Baseball. But one thing they've been able to do very well throughout their history is hit, hit, hit. And Yamazaki is a member of the elite shortstop club who could hit for power and average, clocking in at 2,000 plus hits, 270 home runs, and almost 1,000 RBIs throughout his career in the late 60s to the early 70s, leading them to a Japan Series victory in 1974. And even though they've only been able to channel their magnificent offense into five championships, their offense consistently ranks among the best in the league even if the rest of the tools of the team are not quite there. So even if he didn't earn rings every year, Yamazaki and his Marines were, and remain, elite hitters. We'll start the outfield and left, and join the best ever player of the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters, who just happens to be the all-time hit king of NPB, Isao Harimoto. Harimoto overcame permanent injury and unspeakable family tragedy in the wake of the atomic bomb of Hiroshima to rise up as a baseball star playing for the Toei Flyers. Yes, that Toei Animation Company. Leading them to a Japan Series Championship in 1962. He would finish with 3,086 hits, 504 of which were home runs, good for a 319 lifetime batting average. The fighters' identity, like Harimoto's batting stance, the Flyers team of 1962, and their new manager, the always entertaining Tsuyoshi Shinjo, is unique. The kind of baseball that they play, and have always played, is quite unique too. Every star they have is unlike any before him. Harimoto, MLB legend in the making, Yu Darvish, and of course, the two-way superstar lining up MLB this past season, Shohei Otani, are all absolutely unparalleled in their talents and identities. The modern fighters have that uniqueness, exceeding all of the teams in speed, boasting young but unproven talent, and eager to forge a legacy for themselves, and add to their two rings they've got in the new millennium already. In center, we meet the flashiest of NPB, the showman of NPB, excelling in all aspects of the game that make baseball exciting, the Cebu Lions, and with them, the best of their center fielders, the speedy slugger, Koji Akiyama. Akiyama's combination of speed and power has been largely unmatched but for a handful of Japanese players ever. He was the head of the only other big dynasty of Japanese baseball, Invincible Cebu, winning 8 of 10 Japan series in the 1980s being bested by only the Hanshin Tigers in 1985 and the Hankyu Braves in 1984. Akiyama, like the Lions at their best, could drive the ball a mile, doing so 437 times in his career. He could hit for average, reaching base 2,157 times over the course of his career, and when he got there, they made the opposition's lives hell, stealing 300 bags over the course of his career. He also patrolled center with expert precision. The one thing that the Lions have always lacked is consistency. They're always there for the big plays, but often struggle to string together wins, and often forget the fundamentals that bring them victory. That explains their championship drought that has lasted since 2008. They're like the Phillies, a strong history, winning tradition, but issues both on and off the field, and in the front office, have held them back. For how much longer? Who knows? Finally, in right, we have a name that you might recognize if you're a baseball fan. Baseball's Prince. One name that stands for incredible, transcendent talent. Please welcome Ichiro and his team, the Oryx Buffaloes. The Buffaloes have had plenty of foreign talent into the league to hit home runs for them, and a handful of great domestic bombers like Nori Nakamura, but they have always been more identified with the Ichiro style of baseball. Small ball hitting them where they ain't, stealing two bases at once and then going into the field and making web gem after web gem after web gem. After all, Yutaka Fukumoto 
NPB's all-time stolen base leader also called himself a Buffalo, as does the current batting champion of both leagues, Masataki Yoshida, with a whopping 358 average in 2021. This is an Ichiro team despite the fact that he never played for them when they were called the Buffaloes. They were the Blue Wave. But then, there was a completely different team called the Buffaloes, but yeah, there's a great video on that subject, which I'll link in the description for supplemental viewing. If you like absolutely classic baseball, one not seen in the majors since the days of Ty Cobb, as well as some masterful pitching, then I encourage you to join the Stampede. So, three positions left, a designated hitter and two relievers for Canada. First, the relievers. A representative from the Rakuten Golden Eagles is not a reliever by trade, although he did close out a Japan series once. He exemplifies everything that the modern Eagles do right, and coincidentally is the only player on this list that still remains active. Another name you might know, Masahiro Tanaka. Tanaka is renowned as one of the greatest big game pitchers in NBB history, winning 102 games and keeping a 2.34 ERA over the span of his career. He and the other great Eagles pitchers in their short history, Takeyuki Kishi, Hisashi Iwakuma, and Hideaki Wakui, have carried the team to their five playoff berths and one Japan Series victory in their history. They're also a team that was the answer to the prayers of the people in Sendai, who have been teased with an NPB team since the 70s, only to have the stadium in the heart of the city renovated and given a tenant finally in 2005. As a result, fan loyalty is off the charts. And I don't think you'll be disappointed if you join the Eagles' Owen Don, especially if you're a fan of pitching. Our best 12 representative of the Bay Stars, on the other hand, very much is a reliever by trade, and quite a good one at that, despite what his short, injury rack stint in the major leagues would have you believe. In his NBB career, Kazuhiro Sasaki has 252 saves alongside 851 strikeouts in 857 innings of work. And in my opinion, this pick works because the Bay Stars haven't been terribly good at anything except for pitching out of the bullpen throughout their history. The only other standouts in their short existence have been foreign hitters Leon Lee and Carlos Ponce. The silver lining to all this is that they are in their best era of their history so far. Their offense nowadays is quite impressive, albeit with another foreigner leading the way, like Lee and Ponce. But they're a bit like becoming a fan of the Orioles or Marlins these days. You're making a long-term investment in the Yokohama Oenda. Let's wrap things up at DH, leaving only the Chunichi Dragons left to discuss. Now anybody watching who knows a bit about the great home run hitters of Japan may think that I am throwing a meatball down the middle for the great Hiromitsu Ochiai to crash out of the park. However, it turned out to be a cleverly timed shooter, thrown from the hands of the legendary two-way superstar Michio Nishizawa. Nishizawa is part of the Dragons JBL dynasty in the 40s, and later coming back after the war as a hitter in the 50s, was not a legendary pitcher or hitter, but was an expert at both, like the modern Dragons are in 2022. Nishizawa led a young and hungry Dragons team of the 50s as the wily veteran, just as veterans Ryosuke Hirata and Yudai Ono lead the young, up-and-coming talent for the 2022 season in Nagoya. They do everything decently well and are only getting better. They're gearing up to be competitive again here in the next few years. Watch the Nagoya Dome for a masterclass in all tools of baseball, put on by a team of nine who are nowhere close to their ceilings. As we wrap up our best 12, let's quickly take a look at how a typical NPB season plays out every year. Spring camps in Okinawa begin in early February, and the regular season starts near the end of March and lasts 143 games. 35 of those games are classified as interleague games between squads from the two leagues. We break in the middle of the year for a four-game All-Star Series, and after the second half ends, the top three teams from each league go to the playoffs. Seed 3 takes on Seed 2 in the Climax Series. Winner battles Seed 1 in the League Championship Series, and the League Championship Series winners advance to the Japan Series. And there you have it, NPB's League Mechanics, most of the necessary history, and all 12 teams in Japan. And of course, if the rundown got you sold on any particular team, don't be shy to let us know in the comments down below who you're going to be rooting for in 2022. Well, leave a like on the video as well if you enjoyed it, and you know somebody who would enjoy it right along with you. And of course, subscribe and hit that bell icon below the video screen to be notified every single time we upload a new video here on the Global Baseball Network. And with that, let's wrap things up. I've been Marshall Emmert. This has been everything you need to know about baseball in Japan on GBN. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. But for now, that's the game.